Hi everyone, David Mala here, and today we're going to go over moving averages. And basically, what we're doing here is this is a part of our series on dealing with seasonality on data in Excel. And so the first video was about building VLOOKUPs with multiple criteria. And in this video, we're going to build the moving averages and we're going to take care of the seasonality. And in the end, in the third video, you'll end up with this cool looking graph down here. If I can get there, there we go. Which shows you the seasonality, or the sales, your sales with seasonality removed, and it, one of many multiple or, uh, moving averages that we'll have. So we're going to build up several moving averages so you can show them in, uh, can, we can put them in here and compare them all. We'll do that in the third video. So this is a complete walkthrough that shows you how to take data, graph it, and uh, remove and deal with things like seasonality. And it's very important to do that. I explained that in the first video. And basically, if you don't remove seasonality, you can have things like holidays and special events and marketing noise that can go and clog up your data and make it look bad or give you wrong insights based on that data. When you think it's going up, it could actually be going down or vice versa. So this will make you more accurate and give you data that are uh, insights and reports that your customers are going to love. So first I have, if you notice here, I have some highlighted columns. So what I want to do is I want to go over moving averages where we're going to deal with, uh, we have this gray column here, which is our total sales. This is, again, the Frisbee Golf Store sales um, data set. And this is a campaign data. So this is pre, post, and during data. And what we have here is we have moving average three, moving average four, and median average three. What these are is by three weeks, four weeks, and three weeks. So what I'm going to start with is the moving average for a three week moving average period. So let's start with this. So what we'll do is we'll go in here and click in here and you'll see my function or my formula here is for the average function with a range of C2 to C4. Okay. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want a three week moving average including the current week. So that's what we do. And then once we build that, we hit enter, we get this, and then we get this little plus right here, double click that and it carries it down the screen down your row. Now I also take it from here and copy it up the row. So it'll fill this one in and give me a null in here. Then what I do is I do the same thing for four, but see how it's a uh, slightly longer period. So it's now C2 to uh, C5, right? Which is a four week period instead of a three week period. Four week period tends to give you a little bit smoother uh, curve, but you, you'll have to look at it and see for yourself what you want to do. It depends on your data, it depends on the terms of your data, it depends on your customers what you're doing with it. So then next to it I have median average, which is a little bit different. So this function involves, instead of average, it's the median, and then we put a range. So in this case, this is a three week median average. So it's three weeks of, so it's C2 to C4, just like we did for this one here. I could have done a four week or a five week, it would be the same way, but just different, you know, different uh, length here for that range. So once you've done that, same thing, copy it down, copy it up. We've got all the three of these. Now I also want to have this one here. So this column here, SMA4, unlike these three, these three are built off of the original sales. I want to also have the opportunity or the ability to compare a moving average built off of our seasonal data set. So I'm going to show you how to build these two first, then I'm going to show you how to build this. So we've already built these three. Next, I already in the first video brought over this rank column, right? See this rank column here? So we've got that V looked up is right here. Next, what I want to do is I want to build the rank factor. So each one of these, I know that four is the highest, one is the lowest. So I want to account for that in the quintiles that they're in. So I've got this rank factor column right here. And as you look at this, what I've done is I've built a nested if statement. So it says if I2, I2 is the rank. See that it's building off the rank. If it equals four, which is the highest, I want a 0 0.4 factor. I want to multiply it by 0 0.4. If it's 3, 0 0.6. If it's 2, 0 0.8. And anything else, 1, which means that if it's a 1, it gets a 1. So 1's the lowest, 4's the highest. So what I'm doing is I'm taking out the higher uh, uh, numbers and I'm averaging it better. And so this deals with seasonality, it removes like an extreme holiday, the outliers, the, uh, uh, you know, weird noise campaigns, things like that, it smooths it. And it smooths it by quintiles. Quintiles, we got four different groups or quarters. 
you can look at. And uh, what we do here, so we've done that, we carry that down. Once we've done that uh, formula, just like I showed you right there, okay? Again, this is the formula right up here in the formula bar, okay? What we do is we carry that down by hitting the little plus there, double clicking it. It carries it all the way down through our data. And you can see then, these are the factors that I'm gonna be multiplying the total sales by to get what's in the next column. So the next column, all it is is this, this, the total sales column C2 times M2, and then I carry that down. That's how I get the seasonalized data, or deseasonalized, that's a better way to say it, where it has seasonality, noise, and uh, uh, you know trending and cycling and things like that removed from it. So then, once we've done that, I want to build a moving average based off of this sand, sales sand seasonality column. So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did here for MA4, I'm calling it SMA4, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm averaging, but instead of averaging the C column and the ones, the range from the C column, I'm averaging it from the N column. And that's how I get this, and there's your formula there, and I just copy it down again with a plus, copy it down, copy it up. And uh, that gives me now three, four, three moving averages, two moving averages, and a median average for the regular sales and then I also have this moving average for for the sales uh, with seasonality removed and again we've removed it by multiplying by this rank factor which we multiply a nested if against the uh, the rank right here which we got from the first video so in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to go into creating a nice pivot chart or pivot table and then a pivot chart and we're going to show you how that to include everything here so that you have your total sales, your original total sales, any one of those four moving averages, and then uh, your sales seasonality. So you can sit there and say to your, you know, your boss or your, your requesters, hey, look, this is why I removed the seasonality because it's, you know, or this is why I had to go with this number versus this or this graph versus this because the seasonality in it makes it look like it's going up when it's actually not. So you can compare the moving averages. If I were to put the moving average for the uh, sales with seasonality removed in it, you'd see a different trend than this. This looks like an uptrend, pretty much to me. A little, you know, a, a lot of sideways movement, but it's definitely an uptrend. This one here, the purple one, is definitely a downtrend. So that's why it's important to remove seasonality and identify seasonality and trends and noise and cycles in your uh, data set when you're graphing it and giving it to your users. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and please stay tuned for part three. If you haven't watched part one, go back and watch that and part three will be out in a little bit and you'll be able to see that and you'll be able to build this whole thing uh, and show your users how you know to identify or how you identified seasonality and why you removed it from their data and so on. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like down below and have a great day.